Seeing no further introductions, it's now time for members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray on Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This is the second time this session that I rise to speak about multiple sclerosis. I do so in recognition of the 100,000 Canadians suffering from MS, for which there is no cure, and especially my loved ones and friends directly impacted by this disease. I dedicate this statement to a longtime friend and sister of our MP, Larry Miller. Her name is Mary Lou Miller, Diane Hepburn, and Kathy Brockle all from the great riding of Bruce Grayle and Sound. I also want to welcome volunteers from the MS Society of Canada for MS World Day at Queen's Park. This year, the MS Society is taking its awareness campaign to the next level by asking all of us to step up to the challenge by joining Team Fight and to participate in local events. I look forward to supporting events put on by the Bruce Gray chapter in my riding. In fact, this chapter has recently expanded to include both Bruce and Gray counties in an effort to improve access and service to constituents living with MS in our region. I commend this group on its tireless advocacy and continued efforts to raise awareness about the suffering of the people directly affected by MS and the need for improvements to support to supports for MS victims as they are unable to work or who can only work occasionally. I thank all of you for acknowledging and wearing carnations today and encourage you to get involved in your local MS walk or bike tour and continue to fight to end MS. I thank all of the volunteers and all the staff people that tirelessly give for the benefit of others. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Here, here. Member Stavis, the member from London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. In Canada, citizens have a greater risk of developing multiple sclerosis than anywhere else in the world. Today, we, as members of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, can recognize the role we play in supporting those affected by MS. We must ensure that the over 35,000 Ontarians living with MS receive quality, coordinated health care and continue to advocate for the hard work, hardworking caregivers who help their loved ones get through the daily challenges of life with MS. And above all, we must ensure that those living with MS are supported so they can live independently and fulfilling lives. Today, I am wearing a carnation to show my solidarity with the MS community and in recognition of World MS Day. I encourage the constituents in my riding to join with me by sharing this message on social media and getting involved in a local MS event, such as a MS walk or an MS bike tour. Mr. Speaker, I urge each and every one of us to join this fight to end MS. Thank you. Thank you. from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in celebration of Asian Heritage Month. In 2001, former Senator Vivian Poi brought forward the Senate motion designating May as Asian Heritage Month in Canada. This designation provides an opportunity for us to recognize the long and rich history of Asian Canadians and their social, cultural, economic, and political contribution to this province and Canada. In my riding of Scarborough Asian Court, there are many Asian community leaders who have made their mark in business, culture, industry, and sport, like Mei Yi, a lawyer and founder of Scarborough Chinese Community Outreach and recipient of Leading Woman Building Community Awards, uh, Wei Chen Yi, President of the Confederation of Toronto Chinese Canadian Organizations and President of Foodie Mark, Hugh Zane, recipient of Order of Ontario and longtime community activist, and Azilia Liu, a star field hockey athlete and Quest for Gold recipient. Having the privilege of representing one of the most diverse and multicultural ridings in the Greater Toronto Area, I know firsthand that diversity strengthens our communities, contributes to our com economies, and makes Ontario a great place to work and play. Mr. Speaker, while May is drawing to a close, I encourage everyone to continue to celebrate and recognize Ontario's dynamic Asian community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from uh, Niagara West Lambert. Thank you, Speaker. Exciting news. Tomorrow I'm meeting royalty. Wow. I'm meeting royalty. And on top of that, I'm not in town. What are you talking about? I'm having high tea for the King and Queen of Netherlands, King Willem Alexander, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. They're going to be in Beamsville, my ride in Niagara West Lambert. I think as members know, we've all risen, all three parties, in celebration the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands and the major leading role that Canadian soldiers played in freeing that country. So the King and Queen here to help celebrate and mark that occasion. I always like to say in my riding speaker of Niagara West Glanbrook, the second language is actually Dutch. There are over a million people in Canada with Dutch heritage. We got most of the quality in Niagara West Glanbrook. 
A large number of Dutch immigrants have settled in West Niagara. They've started businesses. They've founded churches, leaders in civic life, built schools, woven a strong fabric in our community. And I'm proud of that. So King Wilhelm Alexander and Queen Maxima, they're giving out new scholarships at the University of Waterloo to celebrate that relationship. They're going to be meeting with veterans who are actually there freeing the Netherlands from the Nazis in World War II. And then they're heading to Beansville to Cosmic Greenhouses, an orchid specialist, celebrating the work of Neil Van Stieklenberg and his brother Mike. Came here 11 years ago, started a business, making the best orchids I'd say in North America. I don't know what I'm more excited about, meeting the king and queen, uh, celebrating what my constituents are doing with the greenhouse business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not lucky enough to have high tea, but I do get to greet them. <laughs> Member State the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to have been a part of the fight against multiple sclerosis for many years. I've provided care and have arranged home services for many patients with MS in and out of hospitals in my home community of Cambridge, North Dumfries, and Waterloo Region, in my time as a nurse and a care coordinator at the Waterloo Wellington CCAC. Speaker, Canada has the highest rate of MS in the world, and it's our jobs as public servants to support citizens of this great country when they're faced with such an unpredictable disease. In Ontario, over 35,000 people are living with this disease. I encourage my fellow members to advocate for income and employment support systems, which will ensure that those affected by MS will get the help as soon as they need it. Quality and coordinated health care is needed by those living with MS so that they and their loved ones can continue to live healthy, independent, fulfilling lives. Today and throughout MS Awareness Month, I'm wearing a carnation to signal my fight against MS, and I encourage all of you, as well as the constituents in your ridings, as well as mine, to join me to show our solidarity. Speaker, I want to thank the many great volunteers and staff of the newly formed Grand River Chapter of the MS Society of Canada, which supports my community of Cambridge and the Waterloo Region. Thank you all for choosing to fight to, MN, to end MS. And Speaker, I urge each of us to continue demonstrating this fight during World MS Day and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Thorn Hill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I just want to mention my son Mitch has made it in. Uh, he's on the top yeah. of the with, uh, with members of the Ellers Danlos Syndrome Support Group of Ontario, and there's two uh, women up here as well who join them. And I'm rising today to speak about Ellers Danlos Syndrome, and this is May, which is Awareness Month for EDS. Ellers Danlos Syndrome is often misunderstood, underrecognized, and difficult to diagnose. And it's a con connective tissue disorder, Mr. Speaker. I know this because my own son, Mitch, was diagnosed with this condition only two years ago. Its symptoms can range from extreme joint hypermobility, joint dislocations, impaired mobility, skin fragility, cranial instability, marked dizziness, cardiac irregularity, and severe chronic pain. The vascular form of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome places affected people at high risk of death due to spontaneous blood vessel rupture at an early age. Unfortunately, this disease is relatively unknown among the general public, and only some medical specialists fully recognize the nuances of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I hope we are successful in bringing EDS into the spotlight due to the serious, even life-threatening effects it can have on an individual and their families. It's often misdiagnosed, and many individuals have only received their diagnoses after seeing numerous medical specialists and undertaking many expensive medical tests. As legislators, we can play a role by raising public awareness while ensuring adequate funding for medical research, patient care, and drug affordability. This statement is intended to provide a first step in the process of identifying best care practices for patients and expediting medical research to find new treatments for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to help bring awareness to neurofibromatosis. In many communities across Canada, including the city of Barrie, May is recognized as NF Month. On May the 17th, World NF Awareness Day, the CN Tower and Niagara Falls will be a light in blue and green, which are the official colors of NF. 
NF was once mistakenly thought to be Proteus syndrome, or commonly referred to as elephant man's disease. It is the most common neurological disorder caused by a single gene, occurring in one in every 3,000 children born, and can lead to disfigurement, blindness, skeletal abnormalities such as scoliosis, dermal, brain, and spinal tumors, tumors loss of limbs, malignancy, and learning disorder disabilities. Five-year-old Noah Daly lives in my riding of Barrie and lives with NF, which caused optic gliomas, autism, and a peripheral nerve sheath tumor that is known to disfigure. Noah's father, John Daly, is the director of the NF Society of Ontario, a volunteer organization uh, and Ontario-based charity that provides support and services for NF families. In addition to providing assistance to individuals and families, they work closely with clinical and research professionals who specialize in the treatment of NF. Thank you to John and all the dedicated volunteers at NF Ontario for the important work that they do every day. This is a very important cause for Noah and the other people stricken with this condition. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member for Temiskimi Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I'm sure there were, some of us might have a hard time staying awake this afternoon because we all had a fantastic lunch brought to us by the cattlemen. And I guess now they're beef farmers of Ontario. I keep thinking of cattlemen. It's one of the highlights of the year here at Queen's Park. We, uh, um, great tenderloin. I'd like to thank the cattlemen for taking the opportunity. Uh, the Vice pres uh, President of Beef Farmers Ontario comes to my riding, Matt Bowman. I had a, a meeting with him and his colleagues this, this afternoon. And as many farmers, there's a lot of places they'd rather be today than talking to politicians. But the people, but the people who, who are on the boards of commodity associations, they take time for away from their own farms. And actually, they, you know, they make a lot of sacrifices to make sure that People who have the chance to change regulations and make things better or worse understand the sector. And you know, the cattle, the beef farmers of Ontario, I'll keep calling them cattlemen, have had a tough decade because of BSC and the prices plummeted, and now things are coming back. They're looking a lot better, and they are one of the one of the base base components, the cornerstones of our agricultural sector. I'd like to commend them for the hard work they do and for good food that they provide not only to us at Queen's Park today, but to our province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And um, I'd just like to say something on a personal note. My, my father used to say that every baby that is born uh, means uh, new hope for the world. And uh, we have a bit of a case of stubborn hope in our family right now. Uh, um, my son James uh, and his partner Lucy um, are. There's an impending birth today. Very excited about it, but it's been about four days, which beats my record of three days. Uh, that's what I put my mother through. So I just I wanted. They've been inducing. I just want to say, as a um, to James and Lucy, um, we love you, Linda. And I love you. We're very proud of you. You're going to be great parents. I know that uh, Joseph and Alina feel exactly the same way that your, your grandparents, Barry and uh, Lauren and Yvonne, are all very proud of you as well, too. And, and, uh, and I'm a bit jealous uh, of all those people who are back in Ottawa because all my family's back there and you'll be born and I won't be able to be there to welcome you in the world. So I'm going to do it from here. And um, I can only call you a little one because no one's disclosed the name cho cho choices to me. Uh, I don't know whether that was deliberate. But I want to say we're um, very excited that you're coming, very hopeful. Um, you really are new hope. Uh, the world is really a wonderful place. And I look forward to you growing and learning. And uh, <laughs> you're with us. Thank you.